Hi everyone, in the last video we connected our Lambda function to API Gateway so that it would respond to HTTP requests. Now in this video we're going to take a look at how we can accept HTTP input parameters and more specific, how to accept parameters passed through the query string and parameters that were posted to our API with a POST request. So here is the API that we deployed in the last video and as you might remember it returns an object containing the entire event that triggered uh, the, this function. So here you can see that our Lambda function receives a property called query string parameters and right now it's set to null. So if I just append some parameters uh, to my URL they will actually end up there. So I'm gonna say that my name equals Xavier. I'm gonna hit enter and now if I look back at query string parameters it has become an object with a key name and it has a value of Xavier. And I can append even more to this, so I can say name is Xavier and hello equals world. And it will just add a property hello with the value world to the query string parameters object. So let me remove hello again. Now let's go to our functions code and let's do something with this. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna to go to the handler.js file. And so here you can see this is a response that we return right now to the user, regardless of what request he has made. So above this, I'm going to write an if statement. I'm going to say if we have a query string parameters in our event, and if that query string parameters has a name field, then I'm going to return callback. I'm going to return no error message, and I'm going to return a response. Response. So I'm going to copy this response object here, paste that in there, and I'm going to return, um, and I'm going to return just the message. I'm not going to return the input, and I'm going to let this function greet me. So I'm going to say hello plus event dot query string parameters dot name plus nice to meet you, for example. So now it will greet people who have given their names. So let's deploy that function and see if it actually works. So I'm going to open up a terminal. I'm going to type in SLS deploy. I'm going to fast forward till it's finished. All right, so our API has been successfully deployed. I'm going to go back to Chrome and I'm going to rerun my request. And now you can see we get a different response. This time we get message, hello, Xavier, nice to meet you. And I can change this name to whatever. I can say Pete, and then it will say, hello, Pete, nice to meet you. So we detected our query parameters and it has used the value of the query parameter uh, to actually greet us. So that's really great. So that's how you can accept input via a GET request. But what about POST requests? Well, let's start by configuring our function so that it also accepts a POST request. Because if I go back to Visual Studio Code and I open the serverless.yaml file, if I scroll down, you can actually see that this is the this is the event that can trigger our function and it only responds to a get method. So in order for a function to accept a post method, I just have to change it to post. And if you want to accept both, then you have to add another HTTP event uh, to the event section. But for now, I'm just going to set up my function so that it only accepts a post request. So I'm going to redeploy my function now. And now that that's done, I'm going to copy the URL. I'm not going to open it in Chrome. And I'm going to use a tool called Postman. Now, Postman is a tool that allows you to send requests to an API and see the response. And with Postman, you can send any type of request. So making a GET request is really easy. You just type in a URL into Chrome. But making a POST request is a little bit more trickier. So I'm going to use Postman for that. I'm going to enter the URL of our API in here. I'm going to change the method to POST. Uh, and then I'm going to just send the request and see what our API returns. And so as you can see, our API responds with almost the same output um, as before. So if I scroll down here, you can see it has a message, it has input, it, ha it has all the information about the event that triggered this function. Uh, and as you notice, it has set the HTTP method to post because we've made a post request. So let's now post a JSON object to our API. So I'm going to go here to body 
And I want to send a raw body and I'm going to set the type to JSON, application test JSON. And I'm going to give it an object. I'm going to post name Xavier to our API. Now, if I send this request again, and if, I, and if I scroll down, now you can see that it has received a body and it has received a object that looks like the object that we send, but it, there's some weird stuff going on. And that's because our object is being cast to a string. So this was serialized uh, into a string. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's change that. Let's interpret this JSON file. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code here. I'm going to go to our function. I'm going to remove the terminal here. And I'm going to say if the event.http method is a post method and we have a body, we're going to look at that body and we're going to try to make some sense of it. So I'm going to start by saying let JSON, we're going to create a JSON variable. We're going to parse the body event.body and then we're going to return a new callback. So I'm just going to copy the callback of the previous if statement here. And there we go. And I'm going to remove this message. I'm going to say hi, I've I have received a JSON object from you. And then we're going to return the object, the JSON object that we got, right? So this is pretty simple. We just parse the body that we got from the client into a JSON object, and then we return that object in the objects field. I'm going to save my function, open up the terminal, redeploy our API again. Now, while this is deploying, it's also interesting to note that you should do some more validation on the body before, um, before you actually parse it into a JSON, because if the user posts uh, just regular plain text and not a JSON object, then this is going to throw an error and you will never see your callback being called. So you have to do things like checking if it's a valid JSON object and checking if the parameters that you expect are there. But that's a bit beyond the scope of this video. So now that the deployment has finished, let's go back to Postman and send our request again. So here I'm back in Postman. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to send this object again. I'm going to scroll down and now you can see that our API responds the way we want. So it says, hi, I have received a JSON object from you. Then it has an object field and it returns the exact same object that we have posted before. So let's test that. Let's say my last name is uh, Hendrix. I can send that. If I scroll down, I can see that it has received the object with name and last name. Now note that by default serverless will accept all the input uh, from the user and send it straight away to your Lambda function. But you can also configure API Gateway to perform some basic validations before it triggers your function. Uh, that might help with reducing the amount of fake requests that you get um, on your Lambda function. But that is all for a later video. But that was it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use the serverless.yaml file to provision other AWS services such as an S3 bucket or a DynamoDB table. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel or hit the thumbs up button. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.